Now that we know what a competitive market equilibrium is, we can ask the question, how much better off are people for being able to participate in such competitive markets? And we'll call that the equilibrium surplus. So by surplus, we mean a dollar measure of how much better off people are for being able to participate in a market. Or you can think of it as how much would people be willing to pay to enter a market rather than be shut out from that market. So here we have four graphs of competitive market equilibria. Two for the output market where the demand comes from households and the supply comes from firms. And two for the input market of labor where the demand comes from firms and the supply comes from households. So let's begin with the output market. And let's first think about households or consumers. Now, when we derived the demand curve for households, we said that households continue to purchase goods so long as the marginal benefit is larger than the marginal cost. And they'll stop when the marginal benefit is equal to the marginal cost. So where in this graph can we see the marginal benefit and the marginal cost of consuming goods in this market? Well, the demand curve tells us the marginal benefit for consumers or for household. There's some household who's willing to pay this much for that first good in the market. There's another one that's willing to pay this much and so on and so forth. Now where's the marginal cost? Well for households the cost of consuming goods is the price that they have to pay for those goods. So the price is the marginal cost to consumers or to households. And households purchase goods so long as the marginal cost is less than the marginal benefit. So if there's a consumer who's willing to pay this much for that first good, but only has to pay this much, that consumer is better off by that vertical distance. They would have been willing to pay this much, but they only had to pay this much. So that's a dollar measure of how much better off that consumer is for having been able to purchase that good. And there's another consumer who's willing to pay just a little bit less, but they only have to pay the price. So their surplus is that vertical distance. And another consumer who has this surplus, and so on and so forth. So if we add up all those surpluses for all those individual goods that are being consumed, we get what we call the consumer surplus. This is a measure of how much consumers or households in total are willing to pay to enter this market. What about firms? Where is the marginal cost and the marginal benefit for firms? Well, remember, when we constructed the supply curves for individual firms, we constructed those from the marginal cost curves of those firms, and then we added them up to get to the short-run market supply curve. So this market supply curve is just the sum of individual supply curves, and each of those supply curves is derived from a marginal cost curve. So that supply curve can be interpreted as the marginal costs for firms. Where is the marginal benefit for firms? Well, firms get to sell their products and they get to collect the price. That price is the marginal benefit. For each good that they sell, they get to collect that price. So that would be the marginal benefit for firms. Firms continue to produce so long as the marginal benefit, the price, is larger than the marginal cost. But there's some firm that's willing to produce that first good for this amount. That's that firm's marginal cost. But they get to sell it 
for this amount. So that firm is making a marginal profit on that first good of that vertical distance. There's another firm that's willing to produce a good for this amount, but they get to collect the price. So there's another marginal profit for that good, and for the next good, and the next good, and so on. So when we add up all those marginal profits, we get what we call producer surplus, which is also the short-run profit in this market. It's the short-run profit because we're using the short-run supply curve that summed all those individual supply curves for all the firms in the market. If we use the long-run supply curve instead, we know now that because of entry and exit of firms, the long-run market supply curve is perfectly horizontal. It's just flat at the market price. So this triangle would disappear entirely. There would be no long-run producer surplus, no long-run profit. And that's, of course, because entry and exit drive profits for firms in competitive markets to zero. But in the short run, we get this producer surplus triangle that's equal to short run profit. What about input markets? Well, let's think about households first. Households contribute the supply curve in the labor market. That supply curve is a marginal cost, a marginal opportunity cost for households or for workers. It tells us that there's some worker that's willing to work for this amount. What's the marginal benefit of, uh, for workers in a labor market? Well, the benefit for them is the wage they get to collect. So this wage would be the marginal benefit for workers. Workers work so long as the marginal benefit from an additional hour of working is larger than the marginal cost. So the work until this point. But there's some worker, as we said, who's willing to work for this amount, but that worker gets to work for the wage. He gets to be paid that wage in the market. So that worker is better off by that distance. They would have been willing to work for this amount, but they actually got to collect the market wage. Another worker is willing to work for this amount, but they get to collect the market wage. So they're better off by this distance and so on and so forth for all of the workers. So now when we sum all of that, we get a measure of worker surplus in this market. Finally, we can think about the firms in the labor market. The firms contribute the demand curve in the labor market and that demand curve tells us the marginal benefit for firms. There's a firm that's willing to pay this much for that first worker because that first worker's marginal product is so high for that firm. But the firm only has to pay the wage and that wage for the firm is the marginal cost. The wage is what the firm has to pay so this is the marginal cost for firms. Firms are going to keep hiring workers so long as the marginal cost is less than the marginal benefit. If there's a firm that's willing to pay this much for that first worker, but that firm only has to pay the market wage, that firm's going to make a profit of this amount on that first worker. And similarly for the next worker, there's a firm that's willing to pay this much, but they only have to pay the market wage. So make, they're making an additional marginal profit of this distance, and so on and so forth. When we add up all those marginal profits, we get a measure of producer surplus, or firm surplus, in this labor market. Or, in other words, a measure of the profit, and again, it's the short-run profit, because we're not thinking about fixed costs. So now we have measures, dollar measures, of how much better off people are for being able to participate in the market, where those people are households in output markets, 
that gives rise to their consumer surplus. Firms in the output markets, that gives rise to that triangle that's producer surplus or short-run profit. In labor markets, we get a worker surplus and short-run profit or producer surplus for firms.